Welcome back to KC Talks EV. And yes, I'm finally in the Maxus eDeliver free. So first of all, I'd just like to thank Maxus York for lending me the van for three days for testing purposes. They've been absolutely spot on for me, especially in my previous review of the Maxus eDeliver 9, which you can have a look at here. So in this video, it's going to be split into four individual sections. First of all, we're going to be talking about the specifications of the vehicle, but we're also actually going to be talking about how well does it fare against its competitors. The second section is some of the positives that I've noticed while driving it for three days, and I've put nearly 400, 500 miles on the van already. Next will be some rooms for improvements, so maybe what Maxus should consider doing next. And then finally, is this actually one of the best electric vans on the market? And in my honest opinion, actually, for this particular size, you should definitely consider at least test driving one. So without further ado, let's get started. So in this section, we are going to be talking about the specifications and we're actually going to be comparing it to two of what I believe are the biggest competitors. So first of all, the e-expert and by extension, the Vivaro e and the Mercedes e Vito. So first of all, I'm driving the biggest battery model, which is 50.23 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, I believe. The reason why is because previously, especially in the brochure, they were saying that it was actually a 52.5 kilowatt hours of capacity. I'm not sure whether the pack is different. I would be very surprised if it was or whether they're now just announcing usable capacity instead. By the way, I do have my notes here just to make sure I don't forget anything. There is also an option for the 35 kilowatt hour model. Now that is three or four thousand pound cheaper, but if I'm honest, especially if you have to deal with a van for work purposes and use a van for work purposes, there really isn't any reason I wouldn't risk it. The fact is, is that having the additional capacity means that unless if you're a very, very local tradesman, you know your routes inside and out, you just want the additional flexibility. Now, I probably should mention that the E Vito actually will support 80 kilowatts and if you actually have three phase power as well especially on site you can actually access that and get 11 kilowatt the E Expert actually gets 100 kilowatt CCS ultra fast charging capability and also 11 kilowatt three phase AC so yes they do have slightly more versatile charging options but after actually doing the charging curve test on this vehicle, on the ED3, it's been absolutely brilliant. It's very consistent across the board and on a 50 kilowatt CCS rapid charge, it's pretty good. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Also, actually, in regards to having free phase, the E-Vito definitely needs it because it has got a 16 kilowatt hour higher capacity battery. But it turns out in terms of range, it really doesn't give you that much of an advantage, as I'll explain in a moment. Now, with regards to trim levels, there is only one real option. There's not that many options, as I believe, in terms of optional extras. The cubic capacity is also only comes in one size. So you've got a 4.8 cubic meter capacity. Now, this is less than the Stellantis counterpart. So, for example, the EX, but has 5.3 and the Evito is actually quite big. It's six cubic meters. But interestingly, payload is very competitive. So in this case, it's 945 kilo. The Stellantis counterpart has, or the E-Expert has 1,001 kilo, and then the E-Vito is only 807. Now, I reckon the reason why is because actually a lot of the body panels from the chassis up are made out of either aluminium or composite, or plastic, basically. This gives you, first of all, an advantage of range. It gives you an advantage of weight as well, hence the pretty competitive payload. But also, another thing that I've noticed is that Especially on oddly Mercedes Sprinters, they seem to have a problem where they have surface corrosion on, you know, 2017, 2018 models. I mean, these are only four or five year old vans and they just seem to have a lot of surface corrosion. In this case, aluminium doesn't rust in the same way or it doesn't show it in the same way. And obviously plastic doesn't rust. So there is an advantage of that. So to start off with, what are the positives about the Maxus E Deliver 3? So first of all, I am going to start off with a generalization of electric vans. But first of all, the acceleration is really, really good. So it's got a 90 kilowatt or 120 horsepower motor. Now, obviously, the 0 to 60 time doesn't really matter too much. I believe it's 12 seconds and it does have a top speed of only 75. Absolutely fine for the motorway, really. But the acceleration from 0 to 30 is amazing. It really is. Um, the sales manager at Maxis York actually mentioned that it was almost like driving a go-kart. If I'm honest with you, for a van, it's actually very well planted in consideration it's a van. Now, in regards to obviously the interior, it's fairly similar to the E-Deliver 9 and most other vans. I mean, it's all hard plastic, for example. I'll show you some footage here of it. 
But the good news is the infotainment system is very responsive. It's actually different to the one in the Deliver 9, which is a bit odd. And interestingly, it's the only vehicle in the Maxus range at the moment that has DAB digital radio. I don't know why. We are going to talk a little bit more about the infotainment system, though, in the room for improvement section. Now, overall, the refinement isn't too bad. I've now driven this pretty much primarily motorway driving, really. I've done the range test on it and the charging curve test on it, so make sure that you are subscribed so you are, and click on the bell icon so you are notified on that. But one interesting thing is I've seen some of the reviews for the eDeliver Free and they said it was really noisy. Now, I've actually done a decibel test on it and it's about 73 decibels roughly. I think I got 73.6, 73.2 and 73.0. So in my honest opinion, it really isn't that bad. You do have to speak up a little bit if you're on the motorway. And another thing as well is that, you know, you can always turn up the radio a little bit more. It, it's not bad at all. I think it really is kind of a non-issue, really, especially for a van. Another thing that I did notice, though, on the refinement is, and I have a feeling it's just because I didn't have any payload. Unfortunately, I couldn't really put... I was planning on finding a way of get, maybe putting in 250 kilo or something in it when I do van tests and things. But the suspension is a bit on the bouncy side. It does have leaf springs in the back of it. I believe that if you put some payload in, it should be absolutely fine and will settle down a little bit. On the motorway, it's absolutely fine. In town driving, especially over speed bumps and speed humps and things, it can get a little bit bouncy. And finally, actually, a real big positive is that it's a very similar size to even my ZS EV in length. And what that means is that actually to get in to this from my ZS EV or any other car, it was dead easy. In comparison to the E-Deliver 9, where I had to be very, very careful how I was driving it, even though it was a panel van, it was still dead easy to drive. So, if, for example, you've got some people who are less experienced, maybe on your team, and you are looking at electric vans. I mean, this is also applicable to other vans as well uh, of this size, but most certainly it is definitely easier to drive. And in fact, actually, the payload isn't that more different compared to the E-Deliver 9. So it is one big consideration that I noticed. So in this section, there are kind of four rooms for improvement that I believe Maxus should actually do in the next generation of eDeliver 3. So first of all, it still doesn't have, even though it has a different infotainment system to the eDeliver 9, it still doesn't have Android Auto. It only has Mirrorlink or Apple CarPlay. Now, in my honest opinion, I think Mirrorlink is completely useless compared to Android Auto. And it's very odd given that, first of all, Saic, um has the Maxus brand and the fact is on their MG models they could just nick the infotainment system straight from that and it will have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Obviously not for the petrol ZS, e ZS but for the ZS EV and everything else had Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So it's very annoying if you don't have an iPhone. A lot of us don't have iPhones funnily enough and it's just very surprising. So the second thing is is that the heater controls are very odd. Uh, very unorthodox. There is no individual control for both heat or air conditioning. So there's not any graduated measurements or where you can actually really dial in exactly what you want, like the ZS EV. There's definitely no climate control. All there is is full blast heating. You can then put it on the economy setting in order to, I think, cut power in half. Obviously, you can have no heating or air conditioning, so just the fan. Then you've got half cooling and then finally full blast cooling. That's all you get. There's nothing in the infotainment screen that gives you that either. The other thing is, is that in my opinion, the instrument cluster is very, very dim, especially at night. When I put on my sunglasses, for example, it's almost impossible to read the speedometer. That being said, there is a small digital display where you can have, for example, speed. But I normally have state of charge on there or something. So if I'm honest, it really needs to be brighter. And as far as I'm aware, there aren't any controls to control it, which is also a bit odd. Now, the last one is a room for improvement, but if I'm perfectly honest, it's just to see whether Maxus can actually become one of the best sort of range vans. And basically, even though the range should be suitable if you're doing a lot of local work, for example, and I'm going to explain kind of who the perfect buyer of the eDeliver Free is in a moment, I would actually like the option of having the same battery sizes as the eDeliver 9. The reason why I say this is if you look underneath, the battery actually stops quite away from the rear axle of the vehicle. What that means is that really you could have put in maybe a 72 kilowatt hour. And in fact, actually, I believe the 88 kilowatt hour, 88.5 kilowatt hour, sorry, is actually exactly the same in terms of physical size as the 72. 
What this means, therefore, is if you put the 72, it would have been comparable to the bigger battery model of the eXpert and definitely more than the eVito. But even better, if you put the 88.5, there would be nothing in the sector that would have a big battery like that. So what that means is, is it would be, you know, especially given that the electric van market is starting to heat up a little bit. Think of, for example, the e-transit. It will mean that if someone wants a longer range EV, they will go to the Maxxis just purely because there's nothing else on the market with that range. And I don't think it would even increase the price that massively. I think even with the going from a 50 up to an 88 and a half, I believe in the eDeliver 9, it's only six or seven thousand. And for a lot of people, six or seven thousand pounds is a lot of money. But if you need the extra range and once you couple in the cost savings, it may be worthwhile. I wouldn't say that you would do this as the standard option. But most certainly having it as an option will increase your customer base. So in this final section and conclusion, who do I believe is the perfect buyer for the Maxxis eDeliver 3? So first of all, if 4.8 cubic meters is good enough for your needs, if the 940 kilogram payload is good enough for your needs, and most importantly, look at the trips that you're actually doing. If you're really kind of local, for example, in a local tradesman or last mile delivery, then most certainly 150 miles should be enough. I believe that I quoted, I think, 80 to 90 miles a day for a last mile delivery driver. And last time I had a look at it, 40 or 50 miles a day, as they mentioned, um, JLC Group at the British Motor Show mentioned, 40 to 50 miles a day for a van driver is about right. Then, therefore, the Maxxis e Deliver 3 will do the job very well. And especially considering that the e-expert starts at £38,000, so that's £4,000 more, ex-fat, or the eVito starts at nearly £10,000 more or £44,000, then I think it's certainly a great deal. The cost savings are still pretty good as well for an electric van in general, whichever one you decide to purchase. So in this case, for example, if we're talking about a Peugeot Partner 2 litre diesel, it quotes 44 miles to the gallon. At £1.70 a litre, we're expecting about 17 or 18 pence per mile. With the eDeliver 3, for example, on a EV off-peak tariff that you can get and you can charge at home, you're looking at three or four pence per mile, assuming two or three miles per kilowatt hour. And bear in mind, that will be a 13 to 14 p a mile savings. So that is quite big. And then when you factor in, actually, there are places in the UK with a zero emission zone. So there are places such as London. The congestion charge is about to come to an end in regards to the zero emission exemption. I think in either the end of 23 or the start of 24, or the end of 24, I can't quite remember sometimes, but that's £15 a day. If you then don't have a Euro 6 compliant van already, that's £12.50 a day for the ULES charge. So when you think about it, you will save actually quite a considerable amount of money if it fits your lifestyle, if you can go with an electric van. Even if you don't even factor in the fuel savings, if you then go to, for example, in a place like London, you're saving £27.50 a day for at least a year. So overall, definitely worth considering. Definitely give Maxis York a call. And by the way, let them know that KC Talks EV has brought you there. So I think that's pretty much it. So if you like the video or you found it informative, please give it a like. Dislike it if you didn't. By the way, the range test and the charging curve test video will be coming out next week. So make sure that you are subscribed and you click on that bell icon so you are notified when that video comes out. So I think that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching and talk to you later.